Hi, my name is Lindy Jones and welcome to my quick how-to video on how to make a fabric cover for a composition book and turn that regular old plain composition book into a fancy fun little idea book. So here's one that I have finished. Uh, it's got tabs for a pen to hold it, hold it closed. Inside we've got a vertical pocket and in the back cover there's a nice um, horizontal back pocket. Sorry, vertical and horizontal. Uh, what's fun about this is that you can take what you learn on this video and you can adjust it to any size notebook you have. This here is another notebook I have that I use for like a little mini notebook. It doesn't have the pockets but you can work with it and do it as you'd like. Also the one we'll be making today won't have these embellishments on the front but that's something you can use on your own and be creative and use it any way you like. I have a variety of different types of notebooks and you can use any size. The size I'm going to use today to show you will be this. If you plan on doing something larger, you may need to get um, more fabric than what I'm going to show you that you need. So to begin with, let's look at what are the supplies you are going to need to make this notebook. So first you're going to need two fat quarters of um, matching fabric. A fat quarter is a piece of fabric that is cut at 18 by about 21 or 22 inches. You'll need a nice long ruler for a straight edge, uh, some type of pen to mark the fabric for your cutting lines if that's how you choose to cut, tape measure for measuring, pins, uh, hem gauge is really nice to use uh, to make sure you've got some um, straight folds and hems and finished edges, scissors, a notepad and pencils so that you can keep notes and with your measurements and things like that. First thing you'll need to do is take your composition book and get its measurements. So the first measurement we're going to do is the height of the notebook from the top down to the bottom. You mark, start at the edge, come down, and you'll see this one is about nine and three quarters inch. So I'm going to mark that my height for H is nine and three fourths inch. Then we're going to do the whole way around the notebook so that we include that binding. You just take your tape measure, you start with zero on one side, wrap around, match, match it up, and then see where it is. And this measures right at about 15 and a quarter inches. And so the width all the way around is 15 and one fourth inches. Now it's time to do a little bit of math you're going to need to allow for those seams. So if you have a half inch seam allowance on both sides of the height, then you're just gonna add one inch plus one inch. So that will equal 10 and three fourths. Now three fourths is a pretty tight measurement. I like to just go ahead and round up. And so I'm really gonna just round up and make that 11 inches for my cutting height. Now the width is all the way around. Again, I do want to add an inch to that. So I'm going to add one inch and that will make it 16 and one fourth inches. Definitely need that quarter of an inch and we're going to leave it. Okay, now it's time to measure for the flaps for the inside of the cover so that it stays on. We don't want to go too narrow and we don't want to be too wide to allow room. So I like to measure just on the inside from the edge of the notebook to where the paper starts, and that's about seven and a half inches. The back flap is the exact same. I know now that my flaps will be the nine and three quarters inch, adding for seam allowance will be 11, and the flap seven and a half inches. I'm not going to add seam allowance because then it'll shorten it about an inch. That way the flap will come to here. My pockets, will be six inches tall. And then with seam allowance, it'll go down to about five. And then the vertical pocket, I'm just gonna shorten that seven and a half inches by an inch and a half. And so the measurements you see on your screen will show the size for each flap and the size for each pocket. Flaps, you'll need two. Po for each pocket, you will need two pieces, one for the inside, one for the outside. It's time to mark the fabric. I like to use pens um, for marking my fabric and on the back. I want my notebook, the main color, to be in this black. And then I like to use the, I'm gonna use the lighter color for the accents in the inside. So I want to open my fabric up. 
I like to also cut off all the selvages and get it nice and square so it's even. And so I'm going to start, I have it so that I have my fabric 18 inches going left to right, 22 inches from top to bottom. And I am going to, in the 18 inch width, measure 11 inches for the height of the main cover. So I'm going to measure down 11 inches and take my pen and make one mark down at the bottom. And then I'm going to go up to the top, go to 11 inches, and mark that. Now I take my ruler, match those two spots. and draw a line. Now, my whole cover is going to be 11 inches by 16 and a quarter. So now that I've got my 11 inches, now I need to mark 16 and a quarter from one edge and up. So again, I'm gonna do it in two places so I know I have my best straight line, 16 and one quarter. And then I'm gonna come down Again, 16 and one quarter. Then I will take and line that up and draw my line for cutting. Okay, now that I have my front cover ready, I'm going to do my inside pockets. So I'm going to do one of the vertical and one of the horizontal as well. From this 11 inch line all the way over, I'm going to mark another line all the way across seven and a half inches. So you can use the ruler just the same as I used my tape measure. So I'm going to line up right on the edge at zero. Here, I'm going to mark seven and a half inches here. And then I'm going to come all the way up and mark another seven and one half inches there. And now I'm going to draw my straight line. Here. So now I have my 11 half inch front cover. This is the seven half inches that are going to be the two pockets. They're up 11 inches. So again, well, you, I'll just use the ruler. It's just as easy to use as the tape measure. Line up the bottom. I'm going to come up 11 inches. Mark that on both sides. And I'm going to draw a line. My pocket's going to be six. So again, I'll... And I know that my ruler has six inches. That's what I like about these rulers so much. So I'll mark my... I'll get my six inch line right on that 11 inch line. I know from here up is six inches and I can measure six inches. This is going to be my short, short horizontal pocket. This will be the vertical pocket. Now, this pocket is seven and a half inches, the same as the width. I'm gonna shorten it an inch and a half. So all I need to do is take my ruler and measure from this edge over here one and a half inches over I have my one half inch mark here and now I know that this is one and a half now this piece here this is kind of just extra so I'm going to mark it so I know that I don't need that this is extra this is extra save those pieces you might use those for embellishments um, in ways that you you'd like so now that I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Now, with these extra pieces, I'm gonna make the little tabs to go in. Now I mentioned earlier that there's a way where this pocket can either be in the front or in the back. So instead of two tabs, I'm gonna make three tabs. That way when I flip it over, this tab will be inside the pocket but there'll be another tab out, which kind of makes it fun too. So that tab is really simple. It's just a two by three inch piece. Here's my two inch line. I can draw really quick two inches. I need three of those. So I'm gonna mark another two inches over. 
another two inches over from my three. And then all I have to do is come here, line up my three and my three inches. And now I can quickly cut those tabs out. Okay, so now it's time to go to the inside of the notebook with my contrasting fabric. Again, I'm going to lay this fabric out so that it is going from 11 inch, 18 inches from left to right and 21 or the 22 inches from the top to bottom. Again, those two inside flaps now are going to be 11 inches by seven and a half. So I'm going to do a one line all the way up at 11 inches. So there's 11. And then I'll come up here and mark 11. So I'll draw my line. Now, like on you, what you saw on the last piece, I'm just now realizing my fabric wasn't measured very well when I got my fat quarter. That's okay. I think I can use this to do it because it's only seven and a half. So I'm going to measure now the seven and a half inches for the two flaps for the front cover and the back cover. So seven and a half and 15, seven and a half, seven and a half is 15. So I can mark it 15 and I'll draw these two lines. And what's nice with this ruler is I can line up with the lines and make sure everything's nice and square when I draw my lines. There's my first flap, my second flap. Okay, so now what I need is I need a piece for the inside of those two pockets. I know that this is only 18 inches and I did 11. I need 11 and seven and a half. I need 18 and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces because I know I need to line this pocket and I know I can fit that in there and I need to line this pocket and I know that's going to fit here. So I'm good with fabric. I know I have enough. So I know that this is going to be seven and a half by six. So I'm going to line up and do a line six inches. Mark that line. So here's six inches and I want it to be 11 or sorry. Yeah, 11 by six. So I'm just going to start it there and go down six and then I'm going to mark 11 up here. Oops, there went my cap <laughs> and then I can draw a straight line across. Now this pocket's also six inches, so why not just go ahead and keep with the six inches and go seven and a half that way. This gives me a bigger piece to use for embellishments and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue that six inches up and I can leave it laying there. Uh, but I don't want to mark on it, so I'll move it out of the way. And it's another six by seven and a half, so I can just go all the way up. And then find my seven and a half, line it up, seven and a half, seven and a half, and there. So now I should have all my pieces. Again, we're going to get these quickly cut out. Okay, so now we have everything cut out and we're ready to start assembling. But before I assemble, I always like to kind of put it together as a puzzle just to make sure I have all the pieces and I'm not missing anything. So here we go. We're going to practice this. So the first thing I do is I have my front cover. So I'm going to open it up. Um, right sides down facing the table and then I have my two flaps so this is like my notebook is open I have the left flap that will go here and I have my right flap now this is just the basic all you need to have a cover for your book 
but I like to add the pockets. And so with my pockets, I want to do contrasting. So this is the inside of the pocket and it's gonna face down on the, for the vertical pocket. And then I have the outside of it goes right on top. And then with my horizontal pocket, I do the same thing. I have the one that's facing down. What's neat about this is that this is reversible. So when it goes to the other side, I'll show you what it'll look like. And then the outside of it is right here. Now for my flaps, one of my flaps will need to be inside here so that if I reverse this, I'll have a flap. I have one flap over here and I have another flap over here. This one's up high, this one's down low, and this third one I can put up high again or down low. We'll work on that as we go. So then when I fold my notebook closed, I have the outside. And then when it opens up, there's the pocket with the flap. And then what's neat is that this would be a reversible pocket. It'll flip over and it can be on the outside. And then you would have that flap sticking out that we put underneath there. And so it would be a contrast pocket. If you want it to be the same, then you would want this this way. And you would flip it and you would have, then you wouldn't have a contrast on the inside. It's preference however you want it. I like the contrast that way I see those pockets. But essentially, I'm going to have one, two, three, four pockets when I'm all done. And this pocket could be on the front or back. So now it's time to start constructing it. The first thing I like to do is take my flaps and get those ready. And, and then I can go to my machine and do a bunch of sewing at once. So with the flaps, I'm gonna come over to my... So for the flaps, it's uh, folding all those, in, finish, those unfinished edges onto the inside. So the first thing you do is you fold it in half and you press it. Then you open that back up and I'm gonna take this unfinished edge and I'm gonna fold it into the center. And then it's, it's for me, it's easier to fold that in and then flip it over and press it down. And then I flip it over and do the same thing with the other side. Just fold it inside. And this is where you, the only thing you have to do is really make sure that those edges meet up and press it down. And you just need to do that with all three. So we'll get this one too. And I do like to use steam on the iron. It just helps to hold those creases in a little bit better so they stay put together. And then we'll do the last one. And fold it in. Okay, so now I have these three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew right on the edge on um, both of the long edges. Keeps it sewn together and just kind of gives it a finishing touch. Okay, so it's time to sew these flaps. So you'll see I have the open edge here, here where those two edges meet, and then I have this finished edge. I like to edge stitch as close as I can to the edge on both sides. And so I move my needle over a little bit and I use the inside of this presser foot and I line up the edge of the fabric. I just line it up, just hold my threads and go. And then when that's done, clip my threads and now I'm gonna just flip it over and do the other side. The same thing on that side. Just keeps that crease nice and solid and along the edge and just makes it look nice. If you wanted to use a contrasting color of thread, it also adds a little decorative touch, but I'm just gonna keep black thread on all of it and you'll see that decorative touch when we get to the lighter fabric. I've done one, now I'm gonna do the other two. All right, so I have my three tabs done. I'm just gonna put those off to the side and now I'm gonna work on the two pockets. The nice thing about these pockets is I only have to sew one side together. There's no turning and finishing the edges or anything like that because all the other edges are sewn into the seam allowances. So I'm gonna take the two horizontal, the two vertical pockets, and I'm going to pin them together, pin them right sides together across the top for the horizontal pocket. So I'm gonna put one pin there. I'm gonna take this one and put this pin here. 
just put two pins that just hold them together so I know that they're going to be nice and stable. There. And I'm going to, now I'm going to do the long side of this one because that is the uh, vertical pocket. I'm going to pin the two ends like this. And now I'm just going to sew a half inch seam allowance down the sides, press it, and then we'll give a finished edge to it. So I've got them sewn. I like to press with it closed. Then I just flip up one end, take the iron and push up into that seam allowance, into that stitching, and it gives me a nice good crease. Then I'll flip it over, lay it flat, just kind of roll it under your fingers and get it so that it's right, add that edge, and then down. Okay, and then that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. A little shot of steam always helps. It just helps to set that in a little bit better and have it help. It's just gives it makes it a little bit easier to work. The longer one takes a little bit more work, um, but just be careful you don't burn your fingers and get it nice and easy. I like to edge stitch just kind of finished right along the edge like I did with the two, the three little tabs. So we'll move to the machine and do that. Okay, so now it's time to start assembling the whole thing together. And there's lots of little pieces that go in and out. And when I put those pieces together, I think it's sometimes it's a good idea just to kind of attach them with a machine using some quick, fast stitching to hold it in place instead of depending on the pins to do that because sometimes that presser foot will shift it and move it. And so also too, I wanna to get those tabs in the right place. So I'm gonna take my notebook here and I have my front, um, my front and back cover flaps and I have the main cover, but I wanna know where that center line is for those tabs. So I'm just gonna fold these up, right up at the top and then press it down so I have a crease where that center line is. And so here I have that center line. And now I can insert those tabs where I want them to go. So I take my three tabs and I'm going to fold them in half and give them a little press so they stay folded a little bit more easily for me. I like that white, those white lines on the outside. I'm gonna switch that one around. So I'm gonna fold it in half. You'll notice it doesn't quite stay because I had it pressed that one way. That's all right, we're gonna pin it anyway. And fold this one in half. And then fold this one in half. All right, so I'm gonna take my pins and I'm going to either do it on the main piece or on the uh, flaps. And so I do want it to go between. So I'm gonna lay this here on the flap right along that seam for the on the top because this is the front of my cover and I want that first tab to be at the top. So um, now I'm gonna do three tabs. So if I lined up these three tabs, they're gonna be like this. The thing is, is one of those will be gone. It'll either be this middle one or it'll be this one. So I, what I think I might do is I might line that middle one right up in the center and then put this one up at the top. So I take that flap cover and I'm gonna pin it down on the edge right there. And then I'm going to take the next flap cover and pin this one right in the center. And I want it to, it's down a little bit, so it's lined up. And then I'm going to take that long pocket that I told you about. And so this pocket will be like this that goes under it. 
Now this tab is the one for here, but when I flip it around, that, that tab will be tucked up inside there and it'll come out. So this one's going to go right here. And I'm gonna pin it on. And now, just to make life easier so things don't move around on me, I'm gonna really quick just attach those with a quick, quick fast stitch at about a quarter of an inch. All right, so time to sew on those tabs. One thing that really helps is to get a little bit of the feed dogs up on top of that tab because it's hard for it to lift up and over and it'll make it easier. So I just set it down. I'm not, if you notice, I'm not doing half an inch. I'm only doing a quarter of an inch because I'm just securing that to hold it in place like a pin does, but without the pin um, when I get ready to put everything together. So I'm just gonna do a few stitches, make sure I'm on top of that piece, get the needle down in, pull out this pin, and then finish your cross and go off a little bit and then you can see it's just briefly attached on and so I'm going to do the same thing with the next two. Now I've got the tabs basted in and in place being held. Now it's time to figure out where those pockets go. So again I'm going to pretend I've got my notebook together so I can make sure I have everything in the right place. Now this pocket's gonna go right here, and this pocket will be the inside pocket that goes right here. So again, like I did with the tabs, I'm gonna just baste the pocket down um, just a little bit across the bottom because that's three pieces of fabric and I don't want it to get shifted. So I'm gonna line it up really close and just pin the bottom here real quick on the two ends for that pocket for the vertical pocket I'm going to do the long end because that's where the most loose ends are so I just line up those edges I've got this one and this one okay so now again I'm going to across the bottom of this one, sew it a quarter of an inch just to baste it and to hold it in place. And the same thing with this one. Again, so the purpose of this is just to hold these pieces together so they don't shift as much when I'm doing the final last part of it. And I'm going to do it only a quarter of an inch so that's inside the seam allowance and that um, it, none of this stitching will show um, where I end my finished product. So I just go a couple stitches and I'm going to go all the way down inside that sequence. When you get to that bulky with those knobs, you might want to slow down a little just to give your machine the ability to go up and over extra thickness. Um, you might break a needle if you don't. held in place. Now we'll go to the short one across the bottom. Okay. Okay, now I have my pockets basted in place. Now I need to do this finished edge of these inside flaps because we don't want the raw edge with the strings all flying out. And so um, the easiest way to do that is to um, take this, and I'm going to, because this one in here, I'm going to sew a half an inch where I want, it, want that fold line to be. I'm gonna sew half an inch down, I'm gonna press it, and then I'm gonna sew it again. So I'm gonna take this back over to the machine, and I'm just gonna sew on these two edges half an inch all the way down so I have a, fold, a line to fold on. Now on this piece with the one pocket I want to make sure that this stays on it so I'm going to flip it over and do it on the back side just so that those stay together because if this catches it too it might pull this up and cause some puckers. So I like it to lay smooth so I'm going to flip it over get that half inch lined up and then sew and then it, I won't have any worries. Alright, 
So I sewed my half inch line, um, seam allowance and that's really my fold line uh, for this finished edge. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to use that half inch. It just makes a nice, a nice line for that half inch as you can also, you can skip that sewing line and use a hem gauge, mark a half inch and press it down. Get a nice good press with that. And then on this one, now this double thickness is, isn't as easy to do, but it's, it'll work. Just fold that half inch down, right on that line. Again, I like to really use that steam. I'm gonna hold this one a little bit more. Okay, and so now I have that half inch. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch along as a finished edge uh, to hold those together. Okay, so now that finished edge, just a quarter of an inch, what this does is it holds it down, keeps it finished, and then you don't have those raw edges showing on the flap. Okay, so now it's time to get it all put together and see our finished product. So here we go. We are going to move to the table. I like to get my front cover laid out up in front of me so I know what it's going to look like. When I flip it over and I do this, I know that this is here. Um, that's my front. This is my back. So I'm going to lay this down with, open it up with the right sides together. Here's my front. Here is my back. When you think about that, um, I know that the short pocket, the vertical pocket, goes to the front. And I know the tabs need to be on the outside um, on this edge here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that tab, I'm going to flip it right up to that edge. So if you think about it, here's that edge, and then if I lifted this up, the flap would fold under. So I can just set it right there. And then I can take the next one, set this one here, and then all I have to do is flip, because that's where I want that seam to go. And then I take this one and I flip it and that's where that seam goes. So now I'm going to pull it down here where I can work with it. I'm going to pin all four corners, the, each of the end of the um, two flat pieces. That's all the pinning you need to do. So now I one stitch all the way around the perimeter at half an inch and it'll be ready to turn. Okay, time to sew half an inch all the way around. I'm going to start on the flap so it doesn't catch. Lay it on. Oops, half inch. Right there. Pull out a pin and here we go. That thread catching, just pull that out. So now I'm going to get to the corner and pivot, so I'm going to go until I'm about a half inch away from that edge. Stop the needle inside the fabric, lift it up, turn right on that half inch. The needle needs to be down in the fabric to turn or you won't have it attached. So I'm going to make sure all my pieces are lined up. And this tab, when I go over this tab, I want to keep it in there nice and secure. Slow down when I get there. I don't want to break a needle. Okay, now I'm going to be careful when I come up over this. I don't want this to fold over. I want it to lay nice and flat. If it starts to fold over or pucker, you can put the needle down, lift it up, and just get it to lay flat. And you should be good to go. Okay, now when I get to the end and I meet my stitching here at the end, I'm going to do a few stitches to back stitch just to hold it all in place so it won't come out. So now I'm going to use this line where my needle shows my, my needle is. I'm going to just take that stitching right up to it, go over the top. And now I'm going to back stitch just to lock those stitches in and keep it secure so nothing comes out. Now, trim my threads and 
we're going to clip the corners so that they lay flat inside and look nicer inside the cover. So I got those threads clipped. Now what I like to do on these corners is I like to take my scissors and I like to clip diagonally and that gets all this out from bulk and inside the corner. So I just cut really close to the stitching without cutting through that stitching across each corner diagonally and that gets rid of a lot of that excess bulk. And it just makes it lay flatter and nicer around the edges of the notebook there. Okay, so now it's time to turn it out. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to push my thumb into that corner, flip it out, get the next one, flip it right out. There's one side, go to the next corner. I stick my thumb in the corner, pinch it with my fingers and flip and flip. So, go ahead and go down. So now it's been turned out. If I pull on the, pull on the tabs, kind of gets it. And I do like to press this down, so I'm going to come over here to my iron. Just going to press this right here on that end. The cut, the, the cut, the notebook itself will kind of get all those others kind of press through. So I have it and now it's time to add the notebook. So the easiest way to put the notebook in is to take the pages out in the covers, flip this in half, and slide this right in like this. Flip it over, get the next one to slide right in. Slide it through, and there we go. And just kind of get it even. Get your pencil and check those tabs. And these tabs work. And the pencil kind of works as like a little handle if you want. You can always sew those shorter. And I now have my notebook with my front pocket and my back pocket. And here's the fun part. I can take this back slot out. I can take this back pocket, flip that one through, this one through. Here's my next tab that I had. Slide this in here. Slide it back in. And I've got my two tabs here for the pencil and I can have a pocket on the outside if I wanted that pocket on the outside. And now I've got my little idea book and my notebook all set. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Again, um, if you wanted to add embellishments, buttons and things like that on the front, the time to do that is before you sew all those pieces together. Uh, you can add those embellishments and add whatever you want on it and you're set and have fun be creative add different pockets flaps to the pockets you can have long ribbons and have it tie closed the ideas are just endless you can put pockets on the outside have fun thanks